Ooh, it's been a while. So I binged the hell out of this game, which has consequences, because if I focus on one game too much, then I have to go back into the other games. Uh, so I haven't played this game for like two weeks. Uh, I played this game every single day for six days straight, and then I stopped the day before. The yeah, last time I played this game was the day before the premiere of the first episode. <laughs> that's, a, that's a hell of a backlogging. Then it's like, oh god, you focused way too much on Subnautica, now you gotta keep up with everything else. So I went back and I finished all of Star Fox Adventure, then started Moon Down, and finished all of Moon Down. I finished Monster Hunter Rise and got like, I think I'm like 15 episodes into Yakuza now in my recordings. I, I now have a, I now have a Mario backlog that's comparable to my old Subnautica backlog. Maybe like half as much or something, but it's there. So it's been... A bit. It's point where I had to double check where I even left off, funnily enough. Hey, buddy. You're so odd. But we'll be okay. Got the new names and all that. Some things to keep track of. Okay, so the big thing is that we made progress towards making the thing I need on the, to deal with the island situation to make our Margaret happy. So that'll be one of our focuses going forward. I believe I still had more backlog to deal with here, though. I think we still had more logs to go through from when I visited that place. I challenged your spy pengling to a foot race earlier. Because you got tired of losing to me? Ouch. <laughs> what if I've been letting you win so I could see you smile? Cute. But I don't believe it. There are easier ways to make someone smile. Easier than losing a foot race? Oh, I think you're a woman with many talents. What are you implying? The artwork that appeared in my lab the other day. Oh, that. A study in Parhelion Red. I assume you had something to do with that. That depends. Do you like it? It's beautiful. Like the person who gave it to me. If I didn't know better, I'd say you were flirting with me. Do you know better? I... don't know what I know anymore. Not when you're looking at me like that. Ah, oh, and they might both be dead. It's a bummer. Investigation notes. Omega Lab was first breached by heavy impact. Perhaps from a sea track modified with some sort of battering implement. A localized explosive charge was then released and detonated from a distance. Lab equipment was damaged to the point of inoperability, and all live specimens were destroyed. No personnel was injured. Samples have been collected for analysis to determine whether any bacteria escaped. It is, however, unlikely. The heat of the charge should have boiled everything within a 10 meter radius. That's a big deal. Omega Lab. Yeah, Omega Lab's the one in the area that I, that where Marguerite is, which is where the facility was where I got a lot of notes, which we're still kind of trying to get our way through because there's so many of them. So that was destroyed, but it said no personnel were injured, so our sister's not dead from that, and neither is her lover or any of the other characters we've met, because apparently, apparently everyone got out that was there, if they even were there at the time. But there's some kind of direct corporate sabotage going on here. Someone rammed a building with a modified sea truck. We've studied the first Kara bacteria samples from the specimen. Results are promising. We were able to stimulate rapid multiplication of cells in a controlled environment, resulting in the creation of several different mutations with potentially useful applications. Think of the possibilities. Life-saving treatments, genetic research. It could be a window to understand the evolution of life on this planet. The findings could move us forward by years. We recommend a wider study using samples collected from a greater variety of sites around the original pustules. 
We trust you will provide the necessary security to do so. The Leviathan site must be protected. The Leviathan site? I don't like that. Uh, uh, Danny's not here, I'm afraid. Uh, that's okay. It's you I wanted to see. What's that you're working on? Just a sketch for a piece I want to make. <sighs> I'm slacking off. Don't tell the boss lady. <laughs> I won't. It's beautiful. What is it? I'm doing a series inspired by bacteria. Mutant beauty. Life, death, risk. You know, that kind of thing. What's this one? It looks like Karab, but Vin, is this a mutation? It's just an art project. You know you're doing that thing with your neck, like when you're trying to bluff an alien intruder. <sighs> All right, fine. Fine. I'm bad at lying. Are you mutating Karab bacterium from the frozen Leviathan? Here? In this lab? Please, don't ask me any more questions. I don't think I need to. Yeah, it's kind of a problem. <laughs> it's kind of a huge problem. Because that's what they meant by Leviathan site, too. There's a frozen Leviathan infected with Kara. Which... Ideally shouldn't be a problem, because even if it did reinfect the area with Kara, the cure should still work from the peepers and everything from last game. So you would think that they'd be fine. But, uh... Hmm. If he mutates it, that's really bad. This is one of those games that comes up a lot. Uh, Subnautica and Pathologic come up a lot in the, like, the, Wow, isn't this ironic in 2020? It's different. Feels different, man. Like, I, guess you get, I just get a, a barrage of comments. And then, weirdly, some about, like, some on Resident Evil games, but I'm like, eh. I, feel, I can't compare zombie apocalypse things, even if they're from a virus, to, like, actual outbreaks. It makes way more sense to comment on, like, Subnautica and Pathologic and Vampire. Vampire. Which were the ones that were I, the three games I actually did play about quarantines and plague outbreaks before 2020 happened. Funnily enough, uh, and the uh, right here, this game's touching on the same fear that we're currently dealing with, which is what if the virus mutates, making vaccines ineffective. Wish you were here. Hey, Tiger, I miss you a lot and can't wait for both of our assignments to be over. Deltar 6 has been an amazing opportunity. I never tire of watching the sunrise and sunset over the black sands of the Cherizian Desert. It's beautiful. The only way it could be better is if you were there. Loving you across the stars, Ariane. I wonder what they're going to do with the next game. So like this is this was always intended to be like an expansion or a spin-off and they have they've mentioned the idea of a Subnautica 2 as a separate entity from uh, below zero. I do kind of wonder, will they stick to the same planet? Or will they find an excuse to go to some other water planet that has its own problems? Because, uh, like many things that have a really specific premise, like the... <laughs> I've Oh no, I've crashed on a water planet and I've got to build bases and research technology in order to get really deep in the water to find the secret behind the whole plot and escape. Uh, it's kind of hard to come up with more and more reasons for that exact contrivance to happen over and over again. Like, cause, cause like, and it's like weird, right? Cause like whenever you imagine a sequel to Subnautica, you would figure that would still be the part that's true. And then everything else could change about it. Like what vehicles are there? What technology is there? And so on. And what Leviathans and, and biomes, but you would imagine that that would be the structure. But how, do, how are they going to keep contriving that? Ooh, Arctic Ray Crayfish Pin... Pinacrid and brinewing eggs. Did they all just hatch over here? Yeah, hey, yeah, I got one of those guys. I got one of those weird ray things that goes around. There's a crash fish. Those guys are pricks. Brine wings. So that egg was to the little ice assholes. And then that little guy is a little hard to make out. Let's let's get in the water. Oh right, that's the entrance. <clears throat> Can I put an entrance elsewhere? I want to make the aquarium longer in the long term, but resources. What is that? Oops. Picked it up. 
What the fuck's a pin out Karid? You okay, buddy? I didn't mean to pick you up like that. Pina Karid. We'll get a better look at him when he gets bigger, I guess. I have an egg to a creature I've never met before? I'm pretty sure I've never met that thing before. Data bank. We'll get back to logs in a minute. Indigenous life forms, fauna. Carnivores? The newt fish, Pina Karid. Ooh. It's like a modification of the of a of the like penguin characters. An intelligent and curious creature with hunts and forages below the waterline, but returns to the surface to breathe. Oh, so it, it's a mammal. It doesn't breathe underwater. Its many flippers make this an acrobatic hunter underwater, but vulnerable on land, where it is capable at best of a fast shuffle. Generally consumes small life, its diet may also include various plant materials. Side-facing eyes, unusual for a predator, these likely serve as a defensive warning system. Purple-tinted antenna on the, on the head detect the movement of prey fish nearby. Shows no aggression towards humans and even curiosity if there's the chance of a meal. Friendly. So it's a carnival, carnivore that has to catch things. It weirdly has herbivore eyes, though, on the sides of its head. Because usually the herbivores have wide-set eyes, so they have a bigger radius of vision so that they can see incoming threats, whereas carnivores have forward-facing eyes so they can pursue and track their prey more effectively. So that kind of contradicts their ability to do much in general. Hey, buddy! It's the shark dog. The snow stalker. The snow stalker is a bear-like evolutionary offshot of the offshoot of the aquatic stalker native to the warmer aquatic biomes of 4546B. It's actually a variant of the stalker? The assholes from first game? My neighbors? I wouldn't have guessed that. It's not that. I guess it has the nodules on its back, but it's not that obvious. It's a really big change. <clears throat> Behavior: Snow stalkers are typically apex predators in their biomes. They operate in packs and are primarily land-based creatures, but will enter the water to hunt and defend territory. Notable physical attributes: Thick, hollow fur that secretes a thin layer of oil helps to keep the snow stalker warm in the Arctic climate. Modified dorsal fin aid in the aquatic hunting. The sign and bioluminescence on the tongue and tail help the pack stay together during winter storms. Assessment. Avoid. If entering snow stalker territory is necessary, bring bright light and unpredictable noises have been shown to deter attacks. <clears throat> so I can fight I can fend them off with flares, apparently. Alright, let's take a break from lore, because I've done like I've already done a lot of it. I'm looking at the duration of this episode, I'm like, uh oh. Okay, so we need a play steel ingot, enameled glass, and wiring kit. I generally know how to make those, right? So we're good. Play steel is going to be made of lead? No. Lithium. Right? Lithium and diamond. Enameled glass is diamond plus quartz. Okay, so I, two, I have two enameled glass already. I believe wiring kits are just two silver, unless they're the other thing that's similar. Wiring kit, advanced wiring kit. Just a wiring kit, okay. Now we need the play steel ingot, which is, I believe, yeah, lithium plus, a, plus an ingot. Ingot is five. So I need ten titanium for lithium. I should have enough. Oh, I have two ingots right here. So yes. Lithium. Yeah, I'm actually running on running low on titanium. Which is not a good place to be. Oops, I just made two of them when I only need one of them. I needed two of everything else, so I mistakenly thought I needed two of that. Whoops. No, not glass. Glass doesn't go there, you fool! You fool! Glass goes in the quartz place, where I keep the quartz. Okay, so there we go. I've got the test override module. 
or Delta Station. The other stuff, what is that again? Enhanced survival. Shouldn't be that hard to do. What was this thing again? The water filtration machine. Getting rapid fire bo uh, bottles from that would be all right. They're all worth doing. Let's see, organic. I've got a synthetic fibers thing lying around already, so that's good. Two diamonds, two titanium is something to work with. Newt! Oh, it's got a horrifying funnel mouth that opens up. There we go. Oh, I never actually crafted that, did I? I just looked at the fact that it's in my inventory. No, I have it. That's the Sea Truck Aquarium module. God, I had a seizure just now, didn't I? I already have the test. <laughs> I already have the test override module. That's the Sea Truck Aquarium module. It looks like a little thing you'd hold in your hands. Wow, did I? I even like crafted like. What a weird blank moment. I cla I crafted like this pl the play steel and then looked at my inventory and I was like, look, the override module's here. I crafted it. And like seamlessly didn't even question it in that moment. Um. Sea truck depth upgrade mark one. I believe we already have that, right? I guess you have to make the aquarium modules right in the... I might, I might make a second moon pool if I have time. Maybe maybe off camera, because it'd be kind of a pain. It'd be nice to have both of them docked, like next to each other. Yeah, you've already got the first depth upgrade. I don't know where it is. It'll be somewhere around here. There you are. Hello. Collect live specimens from the external environment. Admittedly, I'm kind of just like, hey, it exists, let's make it. I kind of just make everything that exists. I'm not sure what an aquarium is useful for. I'm not entirely sure how hyper useful they are most of the time, let alone in my vehicle specifically. I, it, it's a vanity thing mostly when I put it in my base. But it'll be our first, we'll finally have a module on my, let's see, we'll finally have a module in my sea truck at least. But didn't I, I thought I had a replicator module. Did I only start researching that and not finish? Modules. Yeah. I got as far as knowing the fabricator ex exists, but I never finished researching it, unfortunately. That's way more useful, the ability to, to craft stuff on the go in places. I just came in here. Lightning on the surface. So you just like jam some living things in here? Otherwise it's basically a cosmetic thing, I think. All right, come here, Daddy. Got like attached to it, right? Brute shark. Just back into it. Did I get it? <laughs> Did I do it? I don't have a rear view mirror, which is kind of its own problem, honestly. Uh, what direction do I need to face to face exactly away from it? Northeast, so southwest, basically. I didn't think this would be this hard. Am I on the wrong side? Maybe. Yes. Cool, I did a bunch of damage to it just now. 
Now I can zoom around for a bit. Over here by the grow beds. Oh, so now instead of popping out of the sea truck, I now pop into the wander around view. So it's got like a little bit of a cyclops thing going on, and that it's like a extended thing. I've got now, now I've got like a viewership area. I'm not sure why I'd want an aquarium module, but it's nice to see for the first time what the sea truck becomes. Like that, there's not that getting in and out, in and out animation like there was for the top hatch, though. I guess now I understand what the fuck the sea truck is as a concept a little bit more. Uh, that's not a repair, that's a cutter. Repair tool. There you go. Yeah, I might make a second one of these just to store it. Although, uh, can it store with the module intact? Welcome aboard, Captain. How are you doing? Fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it. There you go. Um, yeah, get rid of you. Reinforced dive suit, so I got you. Now we're down to the water filtration machine. Which the main question is, I gotta remind myself what aerogel's made of, but I think it's made of rubies? Or is it made of gel sacks? I think it's made of gel sacks. It's a gel sack and a ruby. Wow! Memory on point. Impartial. That's definitely a module worth having. Got copper wire already. <sighs> a little low on titanium, but that's a fixable problem. Is it though? Anything new on here lately? Unnecessarily? Titanium is a scannable thing. What is it gonna get? Where is it gonna find just a titanium? Whatever. I'll just browse for a moment. Getting titanium should be the fastest thing in the world. Although I'm a creature of habit, so I can see myself navigating in the same directions over and over again. Right, every scannable thing gives me titanium. That makes it easier. Is that openable? What's that? Mobile vehicle bay. Oh. Okay. Whenever I want titanium, I'm suddenly more thankful for all these random chunks that are just lying around. That are, like, excessive research points. They're all titanium. Oh my god, they're getting bigger! Look at them. That's kind of a hangout at the base episode to some extent, but we've had some revelations, some reveals here. There's the Arctic Ray. It said Brute Shark. Yeah, there's the Brute Shark. Hey, little guy. And they're weirdly domestic in this game, so they don't attack each other when they're here. I, I grew one of these guys in here. Crypto such as or whatever. It looks so weird. they all, all their sizes are strange. I think that I think the brine wing's currently the biggest one. Now that maybe the Arctic Ray. But like the crash fish is bigger than the this crypto dude. Makes the things all the scales really weird. I'm a little overdue. Deal with my surviving problems. Uh, 
So where water module go? I guess upstairs. Until I find a better spot, because this is the area that's pretty open right now. Here's the command module. I guess the question is, is it a middle of the room thing or a or is it a yeah, it's a wall thing. Good. That's what I wanted to hear. Yeah, this would fill this would fill up my space pretty bad if I put it downstairs. Definitely hope I can find the uh Oh, that reduces my strength because it pulls in from outside, I guess. I definitely want to get my uh <clears throat> my giant rectangular room thing. Oh! Mant there's a mantis in there. Oh, the mantis shrimp guy. Or whatever it's called. Just scurrying around on the floor. Finally grow all these eggs. How do I actually use it, though? <laughs> Turn seawater into water and salt. Is there like a progress bar on this guy? I imagine it's just slowly creating a bottle of water, basically. I'm just noticing that doesn't seem to be any kind of indication how long it's going to take. I guess if you wanted higher volume, you'd make more of these in the same room. Or, you know, not necessarily the same room, but I mean, probably. <laughs> Unless you want to go on tours to find them. Oh my god, my sidebar is empty. And I now... Desperate... I, I can now navigate down this terrifying 10 notifications thing and see what else comes up. I think I was afraid of going further last time because I didn't want to clear the new notifications that help indicate what's new. Because it's, uh... I qu could quickly lose them in this giant list of stuff. I still don't have propulsion cannon. How have I fucked that up? A snow fox needs to be found. Oh, I think that's the water being created or something. The power cell charger. That's important. There we go. Composite plant pot. Don't care. Ah, a bunch of beds. That'll quickly remove the number of things I care about there. I can just make any one bed and I'm fine if I want to be able to skip to the different time of day. The aromatherapy lamp and a counter. Young cotton and enemy. How do I get that? Somehow I don't think it works to calm my nerves in real life, which is where I would need it. <clears throat> wow, I had 10 more notifications, but it was just this one item that's worth getting. Might be able to afford it right here, right now? That'd probably be worth doing. The big thing is I need the advanced dickhead. Uh, computer chip. Plus wiring kit. Computer chip's made of table coral, gold, copper wire. Do I have any more table coral sitting around? Of course not. It's fine, it's reasonably fast to get. There's one. All right, that's a little annoying. Got it. Scanner's just so nice. <laughs> For many reasons. Stop using up our power. So gold copper wire. We've already got the copper wire. Crafted. 
And we have, frankly, too much gold. That's our computer chip. A couple more silver for the wiring. Now just a couple lithium. Oh. Fuck. Uh, well, that sucks. Is lithium in our range, though? It might be in our range. Lithium, okay. This is not actually that big of a problem at the moment. Lithium. Yeah, lithium is is thankfully not one of those randomly generated loots from a box of rock. Wow, that's a lot of ore right here. I am short on titanium. Grab that guaranteed pack real quick. Yeah, lithium's around these heat vents. I figured there'd be one within scanning range. Look at how majestically long I can just stay underwater forever. Isn't that nice? Ideally, I'd get even more lithium, but I'm trying to actually get some stuff done today. Oop. Welcome aboard, Captain. Coffee. <laughs> right. I never grabbed the one from the box, right? Yep, that bit me in the ass that I made the play steal one more than I needed earlier. Nope. Oh, we're, oh, we're ready to make the actual thing. Which I guess I make... Yeah, I make it that with the habitat thing. Hmm. Let's see if I can... Use this space a little more efficiently. Interior modules. Power cell charger. Plop this down here. And battery charger up here. There we go. How useful is a power cell charger? It just occurred to me. Hmm. I was about to say, well, if nothing else, I can store my excess power cells, but do I even have those? Do I even have any excess power cells lying around? Always got that habit of just making stuff because it's there. Alright, so that's, that's recharging some of the batteries. The issue here... And I guess it's a lot of the stuff in this game has like an obsolescence problem or just things being better than it. Yeah, like this thing charges my set my power on this thing. So it's like it's only useful if it can't be docked in a moon bay. A moon pool. Or I guess you would use it if you needed to. If you if you needed to recharge your thing and you wanted to recharge your batteries at your base without making a moon pool. So, like, in my second, third, fourth, fifth bases or whatever, I might use a power cell charger there. But this one might never get used, as I, as it turns out. Uh, I might... I might even deconstruct it and reconstruct it in a different base when the time comes for me to feel like I need it. Because, yeah, I, uh... I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that otherwise. Whoops. Alright. It's a whole day. It's been a whole day of lore, and audio logs, and crafting. Boop. Let's see about. Yeah. 
Let's see about actually dealing with the main thing I'm supposed to be dealing with. Oopsie. <laughs> Got a little too one to one there. I don't know why. I feel like having the mech is more helpful. I'm ner in anything. It, it's it's funny in, in a horror game. I'm nervous about continuing the plot because that usually triggers a horror in encounter whenever you do a plot thing. Like when you're playing Resident Evil 7 or Amnesia or whatever, and there's a specific place where you have to do an objective, you know that something bad's gonna happen, either when you're trying, to, when you're about to do the objective or right after you finish it. And because this game strikes me as a horror game, because it scares me more than the horror games tend to do, uh, I have the same instinct, so I'm like, let's gear up. Put potatoes. They're growing nicely. But yeah, as I go to a place like this, I'm inclined to bring my vehicle and hope for the hello. That caught me off, off guard. Chinese potato. I can grow one in that chunk. And that chunk. And that chunk. We saved the potatoes, everybody. We saved them from the crash. Go me. How did I... I was not ready to find another PDA. <laughs> we'll, we'll get through more of those next episode. There's so many. And then I still have to get through my backlog of all the lore that I want to get through. Which, once again, there's so many. But if I don't get at least one thing done today, I'm gonna lose my mind on behalf of y'all. You guys are my best friends. I'm a baby, baby coward, and I'm like, what is the most renewable food source I can immediately latch onto and then use for the rest of the game? Where's my boba tree? Oh, this does not go up when you're above ground. Yeah. It makes you go up in water, but once you're out of water, not so good. Look how fucking big I am. Like, isn't this weird? It's surreal running around like this in a mech. Like, I feel huge. I think that's why when I encountered that monster, I was just like, Yeah, but I can just punch you with my giant punchy hand. Because from this perspective, he suddenly... Oop. He suddenly feels like he's of a similar scale to, like, much smaller problems. When I'm in this mech, that leviathan type thing look, felt like it was just like a brute shark or something. But then I'm little old me and I'm like, oh no. You never really see what that thing looks like when it's standing up, do you? Usually. I think it's part of the effectiveness of having an, another somebody else accost me as one. Is I actually got to see what it looks like. Because from my perspective, it's a lot harder to tell. And then nothing went wrong. The end. Great. Now back to the terminal. Let's warm myself up a little bit real quick. There you go. <laughs> it's really funny how fast you heat up. Satellite is down. I'm impressed. The 
was most resourceful. Kind of thought it was just going to explode or something, honestly. All right. So just like that, Margaret should be happy. Maybe I'll get more of the snow fox as I get. Maybe I'll get to go deeper into the base now that I have her trust. Maybe she'll tell me where the fuck my sister is. Oh, here she comes. <laughs> 